Hello everybody this is Abhay Sharma for Thinking Penguin and today I am going to talk about tracking in Fusion. This tutorial is requested by Dilson Abraham few weeks ago but it took me a long time to do this for two reasons. First I have a full time job so I just got one day that is Sunday to do anything and second I wanted to make this tutorial as informative and comprehensive as much as possible. So it got a little longer than I expected. So I decided to break this tutorial into three parts. In part one, I'll talk about the basics of tracking. In part two, I'll get to the real meat. And in part three, I'll talk about the tracker's control panel. So in this part, we'll talk about basics. If you already know the basics, you can straight jump to the second part because it's gonna be boring for you. So let's get started. Tracker tool contains two boxes. The inner box is called pattern, which you have to select. I'll talk about the pattern selection in just a second. The outer box is called search area or search box. It searches for the pattern inside its bounds. If pattern goes outside the search box or if it gets clipped even a single pixel, the tracker will fail. Choose the search box size carefully. It can make or break your tracker. Also, you don't make your size unnecessarily bigger than it should be, otherwise it will add extra time to the computation. The search box size and pattern size is animatable, so you can adjust it if the footage gets shaky in the middle to save some computation time. And one thing, the tracker does not see anything outside search box. Alright, how tracker works? First you select a pattern and then you set the size of the search box. When frame changes. Search box runs its magic and if the pattern is inside its bounds, it finds it and moves the pattern and itself to generate a path. This process repeats on every frame and you get a tracked path. If you connect any element with the path data, then it will match the movement. How to choose the right pattern? I have prepared some example scenes which will hopefully help you to make better decision when you choose a pattern. First of all, always prefer high contrast patterns. Here I am using only high contrast patterns. Let's see the first example. It's a static noise which is changing on every frame. So the question is, can we track it? Well, because the pixels are changing on every single frame, there is no shape. So we simply can't track it because there is nothing to track. Let's see the next example. The same random noise. But it's not changing and it's moving horizontally. Can we track it? Let's see. And yes, it tracks beautifully. You can see in the flipbook thumbnail, it's pretty solid. Let's move to the next setup. This is just a solid color. I have animated the position, you can see. It could be any color, doesn't matter as long as it is uniform all across the frame. Let's track. And it failed miserably. There is not enough information available. So avoid uniform colors. Let's move on to the next setup. In this setup we have two colors split vertically and it's animated. Can we track this? Can this frame has enough information to track it? Well, if you try to track this area where they separate horizontally, it's pretty good. It can track, it can track, but vertically pixels are repeating itself, which will make the tracker confused and it will eventually fail. Let me show you.
it looks like it has tracked successfully but it's not let me show you so i'll create a bg node let's change the color to red select the tracker go to operations tab and choose mesh move let's assign an elliptical mask to the background make it small oops connect to the background let's reposition it okay let's select the merge node and if I scrub the timeline you can compare the movement of image and the red dot it's not matching alright let's move on to the next setup can we track this can this frame has enough information to track well it depends on where you want to track if you try to track this white area you will fail if you try to track this black area you will fail if you try to track this vertical edge you will fail because tracker will get confused if you try to track this horizontal edge you will fail because tracker will get confused here too but if you track this area you will succeed because this point has enough information for a tracker to be successful Don't worry about these buttons and controls, I will explain them later. You can see it tracks perfectly. Let's attach an element to it. let's move on to the next setup it's an animated repetitive pattern can we track this I think you already know the answer but let me show you it fails let's move on to the next setup this is also a repetitive pattern but it's very interesting this is where the size of the search area matters a successful track depends on where you have placed the tracker size of the pattern and size of the search area okay let me show you let me reposition the tracker I'm gonna turn down the enlargement scale because it's bothering me ok so the pattern is good notice the size of the search box ok it's a successful track let me quickly attach an element to it alright it works now let's go and increase the size of the search box so that it includes other similar looking patterns let's track and it confuses and it's gone alright it's gone outside the frame area so why it failed well it found the similar looking patterns in its range and couldn't decide which pattern to choose let's decrease the size of the search box as it was before 
make sure that no other similar looking patterns in the search box okay so this is it for this part in the next part we will be exploring real tracking stuff in fusion uh, if you like this tutorial then please subscribe like comment or share all right guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video